Welcome everyone. Um, we're going to get started here in a minute or so, just letting everybody get in and get logged in. Thanks. You can share some information in the chat, your name, where you're striding and why you're striding. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah, Hannah, I can't believe that it's October 1st already on Friday. I mean, it just like kind of stuck up on it. But it's three after, so uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you to people who have been sharing some of their stuff in the chat. Um, if we move on to the next slide, um, I just want to kind of tell you to like make this a little bit more exciting for everybody to kind of uh, join in and be part of the conversation that we are going to do prizes. So. First off, we'll have a random timer. And so it'll go off and then the last person that had participated wins the prize. And then uh, once we get to the fundraising app, we'll, we'll throw another challenge out there towards the end of the, for the end of the call. So please make sure that you are uh, participating and chatting, you know, with a smaller group of this, we could probably have people come off mute and, uh, you know, provide some information or contribute to the conversation. And then um, next slide, we'll kind of talk about who we are. So my name is Jody Brown, and I make strides in St. Louis. And I am a breast cancer survivor myself. I found out that I had cancer when I was pregnant with my first daughter. Um, I went through chemotherapy while I was pregnant, and then I had her, and she was a healthy girl. She had more hair, hair than I did when she came out. And so um, that's why I make strides. Um, my team name is called the Jay Walkers. It's because I'm Jody. My husband's name is Josh, and then my three daughters are Julia, Jillian, and Jordan, and then my sister is a cancer survivor, and her name is Jill, and my mom is a two-time cancer survivor, and her name is Joyce. So I make strides for the research that American Cancer Society does and find out a cure for this awful disease. Now I'm going to hand you over to Carrie, my co-facilitator for today. Thanks, Jody. Uh, can you hear me? Making sure our yeah. technical difficulties are still good. Okay, good. Um, hi, I'm Carrie McCarty. I'm making strides in Kansas City. This is actually my first physical walk um, with making strides, so I'm super excited and welcome all of you that are also going to be doing your first walk. Um, I am making strides. I was diagnosed in 2019. Um, and then, you know, did the full shebang of chemotherapy and radiation and all kinds of surgeries and all that good stuff. But um, I'm still standing and here and uh, my team name is hashtag Carrie Strong. Um, so yeah, that's me. All right, on this side. Okay, so fundraising is not all we do, but all we do depends on it. Um, so while there's lots and lots of things that um, American Cancer Society um, uses our fundraising dollars for, um, we could go on and on and talk about all those wonderful things that they do. But, um, you know, the research for funding, or I said that backwards, funding for research, um, Hope Lodge, rides to treatments, 24 hour chat on cancer.org, all of those things are funded um, through obviously the fundraising that we do for Strides um, Walks. So we want to dig straight into um, some fundraising efforts and ideas that, that Jody and I both have. Um, and then we also want you guys to get involved and either come off of mute or uh, tell us in the chat. Um, just we want this to be kind of an involved conversation. So let's just dive right on into some tools and tips that we have. Um, so we obviously, am I, let me catch up with you. Okay, so I'm sure many of you have seen this dashboard before um, when you've registered. If you have not registered, you need to go um, start there um, and use that sign in button and log in and kind of use this as your home base um, for your local strides event. Um, so the first thing that um, we would like you to do is to adjust your goal and make it something um, you may think is kind of outlandish, but you never know when you might reach it or you might be close to it and get a 
Uh, wonderful. Thanks, Ashton. Um, make it a big donation from somebody that um, just wants to help you reach your goal and you don't even know who they are. So um, adjust that goal, increase it for sure. And um, make sure that, you know, it's something you think you can do. And I would also like to add, you can change your goal and your team goal. So I always try to make sure that my team goal is a little bit more than my individual goal so that your teammates can help, um, you know, reach that goal. What do you have to share here, Jody? Well, I actually have my app up. And so you can see here, you know, I'm basically a little over half there. Well, and so what it happens is if as I get closer to it, I might adjust it. And it is true. I had so many people come out of the woodwork and go, how much to get you to your goal? It's like, oh, it'll be $257. And then I changed it the next day, but I'm like, thank you for helping me reach my goal. But it is always good to just extend it out just a little bit more so that you can, you know, get the full advantage of people you know, feeling that they're completing your goal. So it's, it's nice. Yeah, I agree. So here is, um, we just want to say that participants that personalize their page earn six times more than the people that don't. And so this is your chance to, you know, your marketing campaign for you, you know, tell your story, why you strive, personalize it with pictures. But I mean, it's just a way to connect with your donors without having to say actual words to them. Um, we know that the participants who update their page, um, personal page raise six to 18 times more than participants who do not update their pages. And so um, I have my story and I you know, tweak it every year so that people think, understand that it's not just the same thing over and over. So I have an introductory paragraph where I kind of give an update of where I am now, but then I leave my historic story down there for people that kind of want to see that. So um, next up, after you have you know your page all set up and everything, I think email still works um, despite the increase in channels available for participants to use to send out to their potential donors. Um, it is said that you can uh, an email can raise seven to eight times more money. In fact, um, fundraisers who don't send emails could nearly double their fundraising. Double and the impact by sending emails. Um, the participant dashboard has multiple templates and available for you, and you can use as is, or you can edit, and um, you can send um, all kinds of stuff. And you can also accept payments on here as well. Um, so this is a really good app. You can carry it around with you all the time, and you can have your up-to-date you know, leaderboard for your event or whatever you need to do. But um, just the message here is like, email really works. And then getting into, um, you know, peer to peer fundraising, it's been always focused on your network and now Facebook fundraisers as a way to allow our participants to more easily reach out to a wider net of people. And the dawn of Facebook fundraising has given rise to a pleasantly surprised participants who receive donations from like old college buddies that lost touch or somebody you might have just met last week, or a friend of a friend you barely know. Um, I know that when I post out there, my aunts send it out and they have, you know, quite extensive networks. Um, so Carrie, have you had success with uh, Facebook? I have. I actually, my birthday was last weekend. And so I threw out a challenge on my Facebook. I, um, hey, I just, sorry, I just noticed in the chat, Dania, Danette, I'm sorry, we see your message and one of us will get back with you. Um, on a one-on-one -on -one to help you figure out how to change your um, Facebook page picture. Okay, um, so I set out a challenge on my um, Facebook page. Um, my biggest advice back to Danette real quick is if you think of your Facebook fundraiser as like its own page, so like I figured out how to share that page. So you make sure you share the fundraiser itself. And what I, my challenge was, is that I asked my friends and family for my birthday that I would donate $5 to my own fundraising goal for every person that shared it, tagged me and said how they knew me and why they thought their network should donate to my, my um, fundraising efforts. And so Along with that, I also said I would donate $10 if they did a selfie of themselves wearing pink and then tagged me on that as well. So all in all, I really wasn't expecting people to donate for my birthday. I just wanted them to share and see if like we could just kind of get the word out more about one, the event and two, obviously um, 
raising money, but I ended up raising over a thousand dollars for my birthday, um, just through Facebook fundraiser and sharing it. And, um, so I'm really proud of my, my friends and my family and thankful for everything that they did. But, um, so what we're going to move to next is, um, another good way, of, um, outside of Facebook. Um, so as Jody shared before the fundraising app, I've got mine pulled up. Um, if everyone can take just a few minutes, um, you can get it in the Google Play Store or on the App Store um, and download the American Cancer Society fundraising app. I don't know if those, if you can click on those links that are on the screen to get to it. Um, so, okay, sorry, back on chat. I was watching the chat. Um, so if you ever could take a few minutes to download that app, what we're, our next challenge and um, uh, giveaway is going to be based on downloading that app. So once you get that downloaded on your phone, you're gonna use the same information that you use uh, to log into your dashboard, to log into the app. Um, and so once you get on there, um, you have multiple tabs at the bottom of your dashboard, or I'm sorry, of the of the app. You, there we go. So if you look on the bottom, there's the home, donations, fundraise, my profile, and more at the very bottom. Um, we're gonna go to fundraise. And then when you hit fundraise, you can either, oh, so then you'll see the big pink square in the middle. It says share to fundraise. And if you click on that, that gives you the option to share on Facebook, send a message, send an email, or copy a link. So my challenge is for everybody to pick five contacts in your phone and send them a text message. And it automatically pops up. It says, hey, my Strides event is coming up soon. Would you, can you join me or can you, you know, donate? I don't know the exact message. Here, I'll just do it right now. Send a message. And mine says, hey, just an FYI, making Strides of Kansas City is almost here. Will you join me? or make a donation. And then it has a link to my fundraiser through the American Cancer Society website. So if everybody could download the app, log in and send out this message to five people and see um, how many donations you get. Maybe we will check back in here at the end and whoever raises the most money in the next, well, we've got 45 minutes left on the call or however long it takes to get through everything. Um, we'll see who raises the most money. You got any other ideas there, Jody? No, what am I, I missing? I, I use this uh, app all the time. And one of the things that I like most about it is like my network seems to have a lot of old school donation types. There's mail me checks or hand me checks. And so you make your checks out to American Cancer Society. You click on the check and you basically take a picture of the front. You take a picture of the back and then it instantly hits your dashboard. So it's like it's like very quick. And so you get instant gratification as soon as you put your check in. So um, that's my favorite part of it. That's awesome. You can also accept credit cards on there. That's another, you know, you're out to lunch with a friend or hanging out at the park and I want to donate 20 bucks. Great. Here, let's do it on my, on my app. And you can accept uh, those check or those, I'm sorry, those credit card um, payments right through the app as well. And it shows up in the app and then it reflects back on your dashboard as well. Okay, so we're gonna call this our recipe to success. So going through kind of some of the things that we've talked about so far this morning, this afternoon, whatever time of day it is. Um, so first work on personalizing your dashboard and setting those goals, uh, set up your Facebook fundraiser, uh, send one email or text from the app and then um, make a self donation. I feel like um, we've learned that if we're willing to invest in our own fundraising, that others around us will see that. Um, so like I was talking about earlier, how I was donating money myself for free um, share um, that my friends and family did on Facebook. So uh, you can very quickly, if you're doing those four things, um, you will quickly see success, at least in our experience, um, to, to meet your goal. Okay, we're gonna go into taking your fundraising to the next level. Okay, so this is where we would love to see more um, interaction from you guys. Uh, and if you've got ideas, start throwing them in there on the chat or feel free to come off of 
um, mute to share them with us. Uh, we'll kind of throw out some ideas to kind of get us the, the juices flowing. Um, so there's wonderful ways to host an event. Um, you could keep it casual, host a backyard barbecue and sell tickets. Um, you could have a formal night and make it all about the pink um, and sell tickets that way. You could also do raffle type things if that's allowed in your area. Um, but my favorite um, fundraising event is to leverage your talents. So I'm gonna share a little bit about what I've done. Um, I've already raised over $8,000 for this year's walk. Um, majority of it is by getting crafty and having a crafter noon, you know, like an afternoon crafter noon. Um, so what I do is I use my Cricut. You could use any kind of, um, you know, craft supplies that you might have on hand. Um, but I make homemade cards using my Cricut. I make um, koozies, uh, the ones you see with the names on them on there. Those are little popsicle koozies, also good for um, little um, yogurt tubes. Uh, you, of course, make alcoholic beverage koozies as well. Um, I sell everything for $5 each and then or 20 or I'm sorry, five for 20. So basically buy four, get one free. Um, but I've had such success selling things right around holidays. So Mother's Day, Father's Day. Um, I've started making some Christmas and Thanksgiving ones. Um, people have asked for like get well soon kits. So I'll make a bunch of um, cards. And then I also just make random cards and I throw them on my Facebook um, page um, and allow people to order things by number. So if you kind of look at my pictures, I've got handwritten numbers on them. So they'll say, I want three number 14s and two number 22s. Sure, it makes me sound like McDonald's, but it makes money and I do it. So um, I've gotten lucky that I've been able to find um, really cheap options for the cards and the koozies on Amazon and also at Michael's. Um, so any craft store that, you know, buy things on, you know, sales so that you can use those cheap blanks and then make money off of them. And then I just, you know, either mail them to people or they come pick them up off my doorstep. Um, I really made a lot of money last year for um, teacher appreciation um, day. So lots of, lots of options there. If you're crafty and you like to use your Cricut, um, I always, Feel like I've cricketed my house to the 10th degree and, and this way I can get to be creative um, and also make money for a really great cause while I'm at it. Jody, you got any ideas? Well, if we go on to the next slide, some things that I've had been successful with is partnering with those local businesses. So um, we have, you know, McAllister's where you put the numbers and the people bring it out. Well, what we do is we have, you know, you know, team members that might have like teenage girls that want to go out and, and help us. So they'll waitress at McAllister's and then they'll take, they'll pull the tips the people give them. And then the restaurant itself will donate some back. Um, Texas Roadhouse has been something that a lot of people have been talking about in fundraising circles is because they're so, um, what they do is maybe a free lunch and then all the tips go to the American Cancer Society. So people come out and uh, help wait tables. And then there's other ones that just say, have the person bring a flyer. And if they have a flyer, then I, you can get 10% um, of all of the purchases that day. Uh, the other thing you can do is um, every season I have a pampered chef party and uh, my friend is a pampered chef dealer. So she um, takes all of her proceeds that she would win. And she's also got a husband that's a cancer survivor. So she donates, it ends up being like four or $500. Then I have a touchstone lady and she is also a cancer survivor and she's on the team and she'll host the show and her proceeds go to um, the Jay Walkers. And then also um, I have a friend that does makeup. And so Cenogen, so I do a Cenogen party. So just by those three things, basically I'm gonna pull down, you know, a thousand to 1500 and um, it's helping people, um, you know, come together and it's helping somebody um, build their business. Plus it's, you know, raising money for a cancer society. Does anybody out there have any ideas on how they were going to uh, partner with their local businesses? You can throw it in the chat. Hey, Yoli, I see the, uh, yeah, we definitely need to tap into this Texas Roadhouse thing. I have one like right by my house. I'm actually going to be heading there for Friday night for a birthday dinner for somebody. So while I'm there, I'm going to ask to see a manager. That's Does awesome. Wanna... I love what they've done. Yeah. Does anybody want to come off mute and share anything about any? you know, chains or restaurants that you've had success with or 
anything with like work where you could do like buy jeans or something. Okay, um, the next slide, um, more tips. Oh, oh here we go. hold on just a second. I think we got somebody. Hi, Jenny. Hey, Hi, Carrie. I was just going to share, um, love the restaurants, th things like that too. Um, I do a style social every year with Ever Eve, which is a clothing store. And you can either do like private parties with them um, or they will donate 15% of the proceeds from your party to whatever organization you are partnering with. So I've done that and it's been very successful for about the past five years. And I know that um, other uh, like clothing stores um, will do the same thing. So, think, and then I bring like champagne and some cookies and stuff and people have fun. So, so yeah. fun. Yeah. I mean, anytime you can put clothes and alcohol in the same room, <laughs> it's a win-win. <laughs> Okay, um, on the next one, and we will share these slides for you guys, um, more tips. So basically for what I do is I create a team gear for the day of the walk and I sell this fundraiser. So I can get like a local owned business that can, you know, print me shirts for like six, seven dollars, depending on how many I get. And I sell them for 20 or I've tried out long sleeves and sell them a little bit more, but you know, I've had great success doing that. And then it really helps unify the team on the day of the walk that you, you know, you have a shirt that you can all wear together. Um, raffle prizes. So we had people donate stuff and please follow your state and local laws and regulations about this. But um, so you have the jewelry and then people buy tickets. So you do a drawing and then they get it or tickets to like a Cardinals game where it could be like, hey, we have two box seats or four box seats or whatever it may be, or like gift cards to like local um, restaurants. And uh, it really just is a fun thing to do. And, you know, somebody could donate $10 for one entry. And then at the end- Can you, uh, can you hear that, Jody? The, t the timer, random timer just went off, so. The random timer just went off. So uh, <laughs> let's see who was, uh, Kim Auden was the last person to share in chat. And I think that she, no, wait, she was not some question. Well, Allison came off mute. Allison came so. on, yeah. Allison, um, just I'll put my email in the chat. If you can send me your um, mailing address, we'll get your prize out to you. Awesome. First one. Uh, you could also do 50 50 drawings, and you could do this in conjunction with another event. So let's just say you have a night out with pink. You can have like a 50 50 drawing or like a dual prize or something like that. And then be on the lookout for um, events that need volunteers because. Um, there's been several occasions where we had like a, a pop-up like balloon race thing where they needed volunteers to help the participants get through it. And so they paid us, you know, like 60 bucks a person for anybody that showed up or we had this trike race where we had to put the tricycles together. So um, usually staff members can uh, clue you in on that from the local economy. Um, does anybody have any um, ideas in terms of uh, any other kind of fundraising thing? Jody, I've also done um, a wall of hope and I worked with Stephanie um, and Yoli uh, for that to where um, people can give donations and then they can write down um, honoring someone that um, they know that has battled breast cancer. I did it at my work two years ago and we kind of put it on the letters for the college and it was kind of like a, a fun thing for the university to do too. So getting people involved at work has worked very well too. Very good idea. So I've done basically garage sales on Facebook. If you're like me at all, you have a ton of stuff in the basement at your house collecting dust or your attic or wherever dust collects at your home and you need to get rid of those things. So I started with my, my stuff and I started selling it on Facebook marketplace, um, did it during COVID. Uh, so I was very clear that I was not going to meet anybody that I would put the items on my porch and then they could pick up the item and they could either Venmo me or PayPal me, or they could leave me cash underneath my front rug. Um, 
let's just say I cleaned out my basement very quickly, very efficiently, which so was a double uh, win-win in my book. Uh, then my neighbors started seeing all of these random cars driving up and down our street going, what are you doing? And so I offered to start selling their things. So they would just send me pictures of what they wanted to sell. And I would do the same thing. I'd say, you can pick it up on my porch porch and leave me cash. And then my neighbor said, I'm just so glad to get rid of all this stuff. I'm giving you the money for your fundraiser. So it was kind of a win-win for them as well as they didn't really have to, you know, come up with extra cash to help um, with the fundraising piece. They just got to, you know, get rid of all their stuff, collecting dust and um, how about uh, a good cause. So uh, I had a lot of fun with it and a little spring cleaning never hurts anybody, right? Absolutely. Uh, one thing I heard somebody say is like, if your strength is like organizing, well, you could organize like a bags tournament, like a, a bags cornhole. This guy did it for the first time. He was in the Real Men Wear Pink, and he got a beer distributor to um, donate some of the beer. Him and his friends brought all of the, their, you know, he pulled his network for bags setups, and I think that he said they raised like two thousand just in that one day um, with everything going on. So. There's lots of people with lots of different talents. So if you, you're out there, you're on the phone and you have a talent and you're thinking, hmm, how can I leverage that to uh, raise money for American Cancer Society? Just go ahead and throw it in the chat or come off mute and, you know, let's see what it is. And maybe we can help be creative and brainstorm some ways to make money off of it. It looks like we've got an idea from Yoli. Um, she said, uh, some people, uh, make earrings, make jewelry, earrings and bracelets and sell those. And then she also suggested, um, making or doing spaghetti dinners, which are inexpensive to make and package it up for neighbors to pick up safely. Um, which I think that's a fantastic idea because you could also freeze them easily and, um, send them off to college with your college kid or, you know, hand those out to, um, that neighbor who, you know, had a rough day and they just need some dinner. Um, Grace said, uh, change bowl for household, dorm, apartment, et cetera. Box, uh, folks drop their pocket change in the bowl, uh, when they come inside the door. That's a good idea. Collect all that loose change and and turn it into um, the donation. Yeah. Yeah, I we uh, have a coffee shop where I work and we put a canister up there and we've made steadily 50 to 75 bucks just in people's change. That's awesome. So I work in construction. So um, jeans are our normal, you know, denim is our normal wear for every day, but I know there's a lot of- Uh-oh, I think we just lost her. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen it too, where you uh, make cookies and you basically just have a bake sale um, and it's like for donations only. Um, but there are offices that maybe you can get with them and wear jeans for like a Friday or something like that. Like um, when I was working someplace else, um, anybody that bought a t-shirt could wear jeans on Friday because we were at like a non-jean place, but Carrie, you're back. Sorry. I don't know what happened there. Sorry. No, I was going to turn it back over to you and talk about you work in construction. So gene days are kind of. They're kind of moot um, for us, <laughs> but um, so there's places out there that don't have gene days. Uh, we've heard a lot of places say, you know, donate $5, $10 and you get to wear jeans um, for that day or every Friday or, you know, work it however you want. Um, I think further in the screen or in the PowerPoint, we've got a link to American Cancer Society. They've got a wonderful um, denim days packet that's got all kinds of information that could help you set up a fundraiser that way um, at your place of employment, or maybe you could even ask your local schools to say if maybe the teachers want to have a gene Friday. I know our teachers will do just about anything to wear jeans at our school, at our elementary school. Hannah just told me that the timer went off again. And so uh, Grace Gray had contributed the um, suggestion about the change bowl. So congratulations, Grace. Okay, anybody else have any ideas they wanna come off mute and tell us about or any questions? 
I, um, there are a pair of sisters on my team and they came from a small town in Nebraska and they have a, a dance in their town. Um, I've never been to it, so I'm not exactly sure what happens, but they raise a lot of money at the dance every year. They have a, an auction, a silent auction. They get donations from a lot of the businesses in town. The town is really supportive. Um, they've been doing it for so many years that the people in the town really look forward to it. And um, so the, the businesses donate the prizes for the auction and they, I believe they charge a, an admission for the dance. Um, and it's a great fundraiser for our team every year. So um, it, that's a, I mean, if you can get a bunch of people to attend something like that, that's a, that's a great option. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. you also have another one, and it's the um, uh, Glow Blingo. Blingo. But it's like all glow in the dark. And uh, I know some people that had really good um, responses to that as well. I like that. Uh, we have a lady in the St. Louis market that makes wreaths. Like she's a very crafty person. So she, she'll just, uh, she probably spends, you know, 10, $15 in um, stuff. And then she makes, she goes around the season. So you can buy one for like Halloween or Thanksgiving or Christmas. And she sells them for between 40 and 50 bucks. And so every time I go to get one, she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sold out. So it's a good thing for her. And that's trivia awesome. nights, trivia nights, Hannah. That's a really great one. I don't know. Um... Reach out to your local um, American Cancer Society um, contacts. Uh, Ashton here in Kansas City, she gave me a bunch of these sunglasses and they're just fun and pink, but I personalized them with my team name. And so I've been selling those for $10. They say hashtag Carrie Strong. I just made it out of vinyl um, and threw that on there. So hopefully I'm not ratting you out, Ashton. I apologize in advance if I am. Uh, but usually they've got all kinds of good ACS pink stuff that they can um, get you to help with your fundraising efforts. All right, if there's not anybody else. Uh, the other Carrie said, make something with a person's name on it who lost their battle to cancer or a survivor's name on it. I love that. Love that. Okay, if you've got any more, um, you can keep bringing them on in the chat. We'll just, um, for the sake of time, um, go ahead and go through this uh, screen. We've got final tips. Um, connect your fundraising efforts to the mission. Um, so... I didn't know everything that ACS did until I got more involved with it. And I, uh, I'm a portrait of hope this year um, in Kansas City for the 2021 race. Um, so I got to ask a lot of questions um, and I'm kind of a one-on-one -on -one setting. And I learned a lot more about what these fundraising dollars that we're raising go towards. And it really, um, it really helped me find my passion because I think when we're more passionate about things that shine through and people want to donate more. Um, so uh, the lodging, um, $500 raised can help provide 10 patients and their caregivers a night of free lodging um, when they have to travel for cancer treatment. I know that um, the Hope Lodge here in Kansas City uh, just reopened here recently, um, I think in July, August. So those are gonna be opening back up. And as we've heard, um, screenings are down. So screenings are resuming and um, getting back to normal rates. And there are people that need to travel. They're going to need um, places to stay. And those hope lodges are great. And they also are going to need rides, even if they have their local hospital to go to. Um, $200 can help provide four patients a ride uh, to a treatment or a follow-up appointment. Um, those of us that are survivors out there know that um, it's hard to drive on those days. And it's nice to have somebody to, to, to take you there if, if you don't have um, a ride. Um, and then American Cancer Society also helps with um, some side effects. So $350 could provide wigs for five patients, five patients undergoing treatment. Um, I did not know that actually. Um, I think that's really awesome. Um, my personal um, favorite thing that American Cancer Society does um, is the fact that there's 24 seven chat options. 
on cancer.org. Um, so you can log on and do a chat with somebody or you can call the 1-800 number and talk to somebody anytime, day or night. And I can't tell you how many sleepless nights I had. It would have been great to have been able to call somebody. So I love that um, our fundraising dollars go to support that as well. That's, that's great. I actually used the 1-800 number myself to get some information, but um, I was also surprised at all the stuff that American Cancer Society does. So I grouped them into four kinds of services. And on the month of October, every Monday, I send out an email or a Facebook post that kind of details like for every $10 that you donate, that gives somebody this or this. And so if we can create this much today, we can give five people a ride or something like that. And then I post it every Monday and it, it gets some attention. So awesome. Okay, so here's some links and Hannah's going to make sure that um, this recording and these, these slides gets out to everybody. Um, so you'll be able to click on these um, links and they'll take you to some different guides, um, fundraising ideas, the Dipping Days toolkit. Um, so there's some flyers and stuff in there that you can use to tweak and tailor to um, how you want to handle it. Um, actually reaching out to your event staff and the volunteer leads in your community is a huge resource. They quite often have um, activities or other things going on that they would love to have um, some help on because um, I know here in Kansas City we've got quite a few events coming up and, and needing volunteers and um, just another somebody saying, hey, I want to help. I want to do something. And I, if you can help them, they can tenfold help you back um, in your fundraising efforts. Okay, so back to our fundraising challenge. Did everybody send out some messages um, through the app to try to raise some money? Did anybody get any money raised? Okay, well, everybody's checking their app. I'm gonna go back through the chat and just throw some of these other ideas that have been coming through out there. Um, for those with school age kids, see if you can get a teacher or principal to shave their head if the fundraising goal is reached, really motivates kids to engage. I love that idea. It would be so fun to see the principal. Thank you, Grace, for sharing. Um, Yoli, last year we put pink, <laughs> big gaudy pink flamingos in people's yards and left a note for a donation to get them removed and put in another person's yard, all approved the neighborhood before start the step of fundraising. That is hilarious. That is something I'm going to do in my neighborhood like tomorrow. Um, I think that's hilarious and that is awesome. Um, when people know how much money it takes to support the ACS programs, they know what their $25 or $50 donation will support. I've had a number of people say that was helpful to them. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's a list somewhere. I mean, I have it. It shows up on my um, history of my Facebook feed. So I know I have them, but um, I can look for them and see if we can, uh, we could send to everybody that registered. Maybe we'll find that one sheet that I had previously that showed me what everything costs. That's awesome. That's a great idea. Okay. No money raised, but I got a new team member. I think that totally counts. Where can we find the, okay. Where can we find the list of $10 provides? Yep, that's what Jody just said. Maybe Hannah, maybe you, if you have that, you can send that out too. Well, Kim, like welcome. Like what do I? Looks like uh, Hannah put in there that Diane may be the winner because she got a new team member. So if nobody raised I, any money. I think that is, I agree. I think she's totally our winner. Yay! Too bad we don't have like confetti to throw up and make some balloons go up. Um, okay. So one thing that's coming up at the first part of October is fund the breakthrough challenge. And what this is, is it, um, it provides funds specific for like bleeding edge type of, um, discoveries to help fight cancer and saying bleeding edge, meaning like from a blood sample, they may be able to tell like 15 types of cancer that somebody may have. So between October 5th and the 14th, everything that um, we raise will go to funding the breakthrough. 
and it's direct funding to the ACS, American Cancer Studies Research in uh, Precision Medicine. And the fundraisers will also earn you double rewards during this time. And so there was something that I didn't know about, but they, um, they can strike against breast cancer start a rewards program where you can collect points for your fundraising. You can go into uh, their store and um, get merchandise with some more making stride stuff so you can start wearing it again. So I didn't know that and uh, I will be taking full advantage of that this year. But I think it's pretty cool to specifically do research because that's at the heart of what I do for um, the purpose that I raise funds for is all the research to prevent people from having cancer in the future. So this is a really great opportunity. Double points, everybody wins. So um, that's really you know content that we wanted to uh, have this time, um, but is there any questions for anybody out there that needs something from us? I can't remember who had asked for help on their Facebook. I'm gonna throw my email address in the chat. So if you wanna send me a message, I can help you um, figure out Facebook. I'm not. That was me um, and my local person, Lisa, is going to help me with that. So thank you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Great. So no more questions. I think that we just want to say a big old thank you for coming on here and uh, hearing how you could raise the money for the American Cancer Society. Um, we really appreciate all the chat participation and people coming off mute to share part of their story. But so really, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, Carrie, do you have anything? I don't. I just, I love um, when community comes together and fundraises, um, and comes up with fundraisers or ideas because there's so many different things that can happen and um, we're making changes. But with all of our fundraising dollars, we're, we're changing we're changing the, the, the cancer world and uh, it's so exciting to see it happen. So thank you everybody for joining us and um, sharing your ideas to, to help everybody else um, fundraise. Yeah, it's going to be a, a October on Friday and we can all start really hitting it hard so that we can get those donations up for American Cancer Society. So pretty excited. I always love fundraising season.